What's going on guys? After the last video where we actually create our first player character in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, which I'll leave a link for up here and down in the description below, I wanted to kind of then jump into how to make a battle mat or how to make a scene in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. We're going to basically just go over the basics of it. We're not going to jump into dynamic lighting or anything like that today because that can get a little bit more complicated and it's a little bit higher level. I just kind of want to show you how to assign the grid and how to make it work and how to make your whatever kind of battle map you're drawing in from, whether it be from a PNG or a JPEG or whatever the case may be, and how to kind of make it work within the software. So that's what we're going to go over today. Now, if you have any questions as we're going through this, make sure you leave a comment down here in the comment section below, but also make sure you come down to the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link to the Twitch stream down in the description below. We talk about things, Foundry Virtual Tabletop, other virtual tabletops, Dungeons and Dragons, campaign building, world building, whatever the case may be. Come on down there, we'll hang out and I'll give you some advice tailored to whatever your specific needs are in your game. Also, if you end up liking the video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel so you get notified when other virtual tabletop um, foundry, virtual tabletop tutorials come out for the channel. Now, without further ado, let's actually jump into the video. All right, guys, so now we're over here at the computer, we can actually jump into foundry virtual tabletop. All right, so now that we're over here, I'm actually in the scene selection tool, and I actually already have a blank scene in here that we're kind of playing with right now, but I haven't created anything in beyond that. So in order to create this blank scene, all you have to do is hit create scene. It's going to bring this up for you, um, but I'm actually going to close that, and we're actually going to get rid of this extra one because I don't want that to be there. Now, if we jump into create scene, what we're going to do, we can name our scene. So we'll just call this one Saul's Vault, and the reason for that is because it's going to be related to the one I already have kind of made back here in the background, and we'll show you that in a minute. But uh, we actually can create journal notes and stuff like that, but I'm just gonna save this the way it is right now. And if you jump into this scene, once I make it active, they have to right click and hit activate. I've already got some dynamic lighting. It's dark here. We already got some kind of stuff going on here. You can move the map around by holding the left or the right mouse button. We can zoom in here if we click on this character. I have some dynamic lighting turned on, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now with you guys. I just kinda wanna show you what this looks like. So if we actually just jump back into our map over here that we were kind of starting and we can jump in here and configure it. Now, let's pick a background image. So we're gonna use that same background image. So I'm gonna go in here. I already kind of have it loaded up in here, but all you have to do is once you figure out where you want it to be within your files, you just come into worlds, test, this is where I put it, scenes, and I have this Sauce Vault player PNG from Explorer's Guide to Wildmount already in here. I'm gonna select that image and it's gonna come up here and select it and we're gonna select that file. It's gonna upload in here. Now, you technically do have to kind of mess around with the pixels and stuff like that, but for this case, I'm not gonna have to worry about it because it's automatically gonna choose what it's gonna be, but I am gonna have to go back in and change it because it's not 100% right. I actually know that my grid size is actually 70 uh, pixels, so I'm gonna change that right there. And then we have these other different options here. Um, for right now, I'm choosing a square grid because that's what I have, but you can actually choose hexagonals and stuff like that. You can go gridless. You can say, you can have grid units that are different. You can make them 10 feet instead of five. You can shift your view and we'll go over that here in a second. You can actually turn on token vision for lighting and stuff like that, global illumination, fog, a war, and stuff like that. You can actually add a playlist for ambiance. You can add a weather effect. Um, you actually have three choices right here with leaves, rain, and snow, which are really cool. And uh, we actually also have the ability to change who can see and change things on here, but we're just gonna leave it as the GM right now. And we're gonna save our changes. And as you can see, once I load it up, it's gonna load up this map for us. Now, as you can see, my grid's not quite lined up, even though I changed the pixel size. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna configure it. And I know what my pixel width and height should be based on a 70, 70 pixel grid size, um, but you, there's different ways you can actually play around with that and I'll show you here in a second, but I'm just gonna change it so that way it's actually correct and that's not the right number. It should be 3510 and 2270. So I know the resolution of my picture. Um, you can actually check and look in the actual image uh, resolution, but even that for this case isn't right. Um, so that's why I'm putting it in custom like this. And so now you can see that my grids are the right size, but they're still off. So in order to fix that, we're gonna come back in here into configure and we're gonna click on this little button here, the grid configuration tool, and that's gonna open this up. And there's a couple different ways you can play with this. Um, you can see that if you actually shift and use the mouse wheel, you can actually change the size of the grids and stuff like that. I'm gonna leave it the way it was, so that way it doesn't change anything that I've already put in. We can also change the grid size by holding the alt button and using the mouse wheel as well, and we can change it one by one by one, but I'm gonna leave it at 70. And then we have this grid offset, and basically what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna use the arrow keys to kind of move the grid back where it kind of should be as close as possible. Now, my picture here is actually a, uh, um, a 
drawn map, so it's not gonna be quite perfect or exact, but as you can see, when you line it up with the walls, everything's kind of lined up perfectly um, here as we're kind of going around. The only ones that aren't perfect are like these kind of drawn on grids, which is kind of okay. And so as you can see here, now we have our battle map in here. And this is Saul's Vault from the Explorers, the Guide to Wild Mountain, if anyone's curious, which is one of the ones that uh, is included as part of the Frigid Woe campaign, uh, which you can find on D&D Beyond. And I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. But uh, you can see here that now we have this going, and then we can take one of our player characters, like Jeffrey the Barbarian, and throw him on here, and now he can kind of maneuver in here. And as you can see, because he has dim vision, he can only see a certain amount of distance, but he can see pretty well. But that's basically how it's going to work for our guy here. And so I hope that was helpful for you guys. And with that said, we're actually going to jump off the computer here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually going to end this tutorial on how to make scenes and battle maps within Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Now, this was very basic, so if you guys do have questions, I want to make sure you guys get what you need. So leave comments down in the comment section. Also, come down to the live stream. I'll be answering your questions there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for that Twitch stream down in the description below. We'll be talking about Foundry Virtual Tabletop, tabletop role-playing, Dungeons and Dragons, anything I can do to kind of help you out in your game and give you tailored advice for your particular situation. Now, if you end up liking the video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, especially if you made it to the end, because I must be doing something right to keep you around this long. I hope you guys learned something today, and until next time, happy gaming.